I'm Andrew, I'm a general contractor, and today I'm going to talk about my tool belt. Whether you're a DIYer or a general contractor, having a tool belt will make any project you do much easier. I've been using tool belts all my life and there's tons to pick from out there. This configuration that I have here is something that I've kind of developed over time and I believe it is the, the best setup for any home improvement project. I put a link in the description below to all of the different components of my tool belt as well as the tools that I have in here. Okay. So as I said, it took me a while to get this figured out and I'm just going to start with going over my pouches and the actual components of the tool belt and then I'll go over what's in each pouch. I've got this pouch here on my right side. It's made by CLC. It's leather. It was pretty expensive but should hold up a while. Then on my left side, this one's by the wall. The belt itself is something that I purchased a little bit later after I got my pouches. I upgraded to a wider belt so it doesn't cut into my sides um, when I'm working. I found that when I have as many things as I do here in my tool belt, it had a tendency to slide down and I would be pulling it up constantly. So I added on the suspenders and they've been great for keeping it where it needs to be. Finally, in the back, I have this hook that I added on and that is where I keep my impact driver or drill. It seats like that and it, it actually hangs like that as I work. It, it's never fallen out. I would strongly recommend that. So when you are when you need to run a screw, you can grab it and just do what you got to do and put it back. If you're not using the hook, because it does tend to get caught on things, especially on a uh, crowded job site, you can just lift it up a little bit and rotate it, slide it back down, and it is less likely to get hooked on things if you're ever doing something where you don't have a need for an impact gun. Before I go into each individual pouch and what I have in there, my overall configuration is based on whatever hand I would use to use that tool, the same side as that hand is what side pouch it's going to be in. So now I'm going to talk about what's in this side. So the first most important thing is your tape measure holder. Um, I'm left handed, so I like my tape measure to be on my right side. That way I can pull it out. hook on what I'm trying to measure, and then with my left hand, pull out a pencil and mark the length of what I need. Then when I'm done, I can seat it back. Same thing goes for my speed square. I think a good tool belt should have a, a dedicated place for your speed square because the speed square is one of the top tools that you're going to use on any project. And same thing, I am left-handed, so I like my speed square to be on the right. So I can pick it up, put it on the board, Mark it, mark whether it be 90 degrees or an angle. I can do whatever I need to do, measure. Then when I'm done, I can put it back. Boom. So on my right side here in this big, this big pouch, um, sometimes I'll add small hand tools depending on the project that I'm doing. But at any given time, I always carry a little torpedo level and a chisel. Usually I'll have two chisels, a rough chisel and a fine chisel. Um, one that I can, a rough chisel is something I can beat on and kind of use without being too worried about damaging the edge. And then a lot of times I'll keep a very sharp chisel that I keep protected that I use for just kind of shaving down wood. So I try to protect the blade. This little flap here is for a cat's paw. Um, I usually keep that on me when I'm framing or doing demo work. Uh, next to it, I have a combination square. Uh, these are usually sold in. 12 inches. This is a 6 inch. I like the 6 inch because a lot of times when I have to use a combination square, it's the first couple inches that get used. And then when you put a 12 inch combination square, it tends to hang down and grab your leg. So I, I like the 6 inch combination square, but any type of combination square at any length can be put in there. And then moving around to the front, I have just two nail pouches, construction screws in this one, and siding nails in the other one. If you're doing a project around the house and you have tons of screws to put something together, you can you can always empty out your pouches and put the screws or bolts or whatever they give you in here so it'll make it a lot easier to keep everything collected and retrieve to put it together. Moving around to this side, I have Milwaukee came out with it a few years ago. 
I've had it for a couple years now. In home improvement, you always find yourself needing to pry something, get on, wedge something up to lift it, undo a paint can, a little flathead screwdriver, tons of different uses. Um, a lot of times too, you'll, I'll find myself, if you're trying to take off a piece of trim or get a board, two boards separated, I'll start by driving this in between the two of them and then kind of work it a little bit. Then you can slip a crowbar in there and get it further apart. So I would recommend this tool to anybody to have in their tool belt. At all times, I always have an awl. That's A-W-L. You can scratch marks on lumber. Um, if you want to get a drill bit started, you can push to make a little indent so that your bit doesn't walk. It's great for poking a hole in caulking tubes. Um, a lot of times they have to be punctured. You just take your awl and poke it. Retru pushing things through small holes. Uh, awls have unlimited uses. So I always have an awl on me. In, in this other little pouch, I have this tool. I call it a crow's foot. If you ever try to get a nail out of wood or pry something up or undo, say like a piece of flashing, um, sometimes the hook, you know, the claw on your framing hammer is just too thick to really get that nail head out and started. So a couple smacks with your hammer on the crow's foot or just by pushing and kind of you can work a nail head up and super useful for prying, you know, getting small things pried out. I always carry drivers and other things in here. Like this is a T25 driver. As a contractor, I use a lot of star tips. This is kind of my go-to. I use a T25 in 99% of the jobs that I do. So I always have a nice long T25 as like a backup kind of stuck in there just for in case I need to grab it. Um, this is a nail set. See, it's for banging on the heads, head of a nail to sink it below the surface of the wood. Kind of like the modified version of the awl. It's got a blunt tip on it. So an awl, or I'm sorry, a nail set is very useful to have. And last thing I'll say, I know I keep my tape measure here, but if you look down in there, uh, I keep all kinds of different driver bits and like a Phillips T20, T25, uh, and maybe a countersink for pre-drilling holes. I keep it all right there. On my left side here, I always keep my framing hammer on my left because I'm left-handed. There's two configurations commonly found with a tool belt setup. The first one is here. The second one is you'll see the little hammer loop up here. Either option is fine. It comes down to preference. I personally like the hammer to be lower because I find when the hammer is in the loop that's up here, you kind of have to really pull up to get it past the loop, whereas here, I can easily clear the bottom of it and get it out quickly. Up here, I keep some snips for cutting nails, metal, packaging. So a lot of times I'll keep a Sharpie in there. I keep a painter's five-in-one tool on my left side, always. This is great for scraping, cleaning off a surface so you can put a, more, a clear, distinct mark on it. Driving in with a hammer to wedge two boards apart. Then sometimes I'll follow up and work them apart with this. Then I can get my crowbar in there. This just has tons of uses. I would recommend everyone keeps a five in one in their tool belt. My other tool that I keep on my left side is a pair of, I call them nips. And you notice the head is flat. And these are great for reaching down on and grabbing a hold of a nail and kind of prying it up, snipping off nail points, tons of uses. So these are very handy to have as well. In this pouch above, right here, I keep my chalk line. This is a 30 foot one. They usually come in 100. I like this one because it's a 30 footer, but I usually don't have to go longer than 30 feet. So I found it nice to cut a little bit of weight off the belt by going with the 30 footer. But any kind of chalk line is good to have. And then up here, so I can still answer my calls, I keep my cell phone and sometimes a notepad. Down here, I always keep two carpenter's pencils. I guarantee you during a project, at some point, one of these will get left somewhere. And it's really frustrating when you don't have a pencil. When you go to measure, you know, it's like, where's my pencil? So I always keep two pencils right here, ready to go. Right above that is the razor blade. To sharpen the pencils or cut caulk, do all the things that you do with a razor blade. And then the last pouch I have here is for what you know, whatever fasteners you want to put in it. Um, I happen to have trim screws in there right now, but I will say one last little tip. Um, if you keep your hammer on your left side and your project requires that you occasionally drive nails with your hammer, I would put the nails in the pouch opposite of whatever side you keep your hammer. 
That way, when you have a need to nail something, let's pretend this is a nail, you can pull it out and nail it in. If you had your hammer and the nails on the same side, you'd have to pull it out, then reach and get a nail, and maybe kind of, and that would just kind of be awkward. So I like to keep my nails opposite of the side of my hammer. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and good luck with your next project.